Hi everyone. Today we got the uh, game of today from the fourth round of uh, London Classics, which shouldn't be counted maybe as a surprise. Uh, I have chosen the game Anant Nakamura. And it's very interesting uh, because uh, everybody likes or some people dislikes when the world champion uh, loses a game. But uh, this is a special case because Black has given the uh, odds of, of a move to White. How? Let's see how it happened in the game. So many people are converted from E4 to D4 these days. World champion Anand is no different. And Nakamura bravely plays the King's Indian against him. There are many lines after this one, but uh, Anand goes for the main line. And the classical, knight c6. And, okay, this is the main tabia. And all we know that knight e1 leads to Marda Plata variation. But uh, for this game, Anand prepared b4, which is his uh, special move. He already did play a couple of times, as much as I remember. But the game's flow in some way turned into knight d2 lines, which is another option where black can go a5 or c5 or can do what Hikaru has done today against Anand where we will see the transposition of moves by b4. So, well, there was an interesting uh, moment in the history of the chess world that uh, h4, uh, I mean, sorry, b4 became the main move known as bayonet attack. First, there were some efforts by Taimonov to popularize it, but uh, the real boom was enjoyed after Ivan Sokolov, Grand, uh, Grandmaster Ivan Sokolov, came up with the new idea to keep the bishop on f1. Well, Hikaru doesn't believe all, in all these lines. He plays a classical King's Indian move. And now, as I have told, the game transposes into the channels of uh, knight d2 line. And this is interesting, because at this very moment, if white would have played f3, black goes f4 forward, knight c4, g5, a4, knight g6, bishop a3, rook f7, b5, dc5, bishop takes c5, which in some way transposes to our game, where, of course, black will never play h6. This is the position which happened in our game. Actually, in this position, Hikaru had some games. Many people also even Shevich has some games. But Hikaru has beaten Galfant with black in World Team Championship, which happened to be uh, organized in Turkey, in Bursa, last year. And that's what I meant in the beginning of the show, that uh, Nakamura has given odds of a move to the reigning world champion, Anand. Well, let's go some moves back. This position is, uh, indeed, it contains uh, a lot of dangers, not only for black, but also for white. Looking back, back all the systems, I was never happy about this move knight d2. Well, there were, of course, uh, a lot of uh, new moves, new games around. My choice went, uh, if you take a couple of moves back, for this particular line, where I have beaten Grandmaster Ganguly in Greece in an open tournament, which I won uh, last year. And uh, still things were not uh, very clear. But okay, Anand was really very well prepared for this game. Basically, I assume on some performances of uh, Kramnik with the line, especially against Hikaru. 
here. Came up with the same idea, but of course he never pushed F3. So basically white is waiting for black to close the center with F4 when his pawn still stands on F2. In this way, well, after F4, his bishop will control important squares. And actually, this has happened in the game Kramnik Nakamura from Hunterman Sesk Olympiad. Actually, it could have happened also in this way. There is not much difference by this move order. And after all this, black had problems with d6 and with g4. I mean, some people tried to go for this interesting tactical line. Well, uh, not Tigran Vartanovich Petrosian, but the younger uh, Petrosian, he tried. And uh, I believe white is clearly better here. So, what to do? After knight c4, Nakamura decided to play h6. And the position I have mentioned in the beginning of our show happened where black had to play h6, h5. So he has lost a move. But uh, Hikaru really believes in this position. Okay, all these moves are very normal. Here comes the first important moment, and I believe that Anat reacted very well because White really doesn't want to take. Rook takes a7, after which Rook b8 will happen. And uh, he wants rather to play Knight c7 and b takes a7 in the appropriate moment. That's why in this position, for instance, there are a lot of tactics. Typical one is knight takes e4. And this will decide the game in black's favor. So in this line, also after rook a7, rook b8, we can always go king h1, bishop f8. Once again, bishop takes f8 is a very bad mistake because of knight takes e4, the same kind of things. And after d6, black's attack in some way aggravates. Here it's an interesting situation. I mean, uh, in case of h3, for instance, again, the same tactics. And uh, white really doesn't like this position. He wants to keep the black side fluid, where he can take, for instance, b takes a7, rook a7, and b6. Uh, no, this is not a glory for him in, on this part of the board. That's why I really like Anand's move. He doesn't rush the things. And now after d6, well, Hikara had to lose another tempo. Most likely, he really thought like h4 is not going anywhere. This thing is really very unclear to me. I mean, I am never so sure that this position is completely warm for white. It may, I mean, it, it may turn out to be, but uh, it's very difficult for the human eye. And uh, I will say like, uh, when we take up some moves uh, back after h4, well, Even a d4 player will be satisfied now with this kind of position where there are serious threats. Now b takes a7 is threatened, knight c7 is threatened. Possibly this one really pushed Hikaru to lose another move. Don't forget, he lost one with h6, and after d6, he had to lose another one. And knight a5, obvious move, preparing bishop c4.
And at this very moment, uh, well, things looked very grim for Black. I mean, with which piece to enter uh, e6 square? Bishop e6 is very interesting, but uh, also what Anand has played, what Vichy has come up with, is the most normal move. You always enjoy to get light squared bishop of your opponent in King's Indian when you are white. Well, I don't know. Many people will call or would have called like uh, Gufeld himself. Uh, bishop f8 uh, has also some potential. It may come back into the game, but as you see, it doesn't have much role in this very moment. Later in the game, it will become a real Gufeld, a big bishop it will become. So, after all these things, Hikaru is taking g takes h2 to get some ways uh, to the king. And here, one of the most unexpected moments in this game happened. In my opinion, we should simply blunder here. After some normal move like bishop h3, okay, let's say knight h7, I can't see any other way. And now knight g5, bishop f5. It looks like black is... Uh, having a lot of problems, really a lot of problems, because uh, obvious move like knight h4 probably runs into knight takes e5. Well, can black turn the tables? It doesn't really look, look like being the case. But came the blunder. And Nakamura played very important move, queen e8. Now is some interesting choice. Maybe really Anand had to bite his lips and try to confuse the issue with such moves. But I don't know. It really doesn't look impressive for white, but probably would have a better position compared to the game. Still, there are some. I don't know. There are some issues to be decided here. It's not completely gone. Now, he played a little bit materialistic. He kept his uh, pawn. He, he didn't sacrifice pawns like uh, we have looked at. He kept his, his pawns, but you see that the bishop is completely isolated from the defense of g2 pawn. Also, as we see with these two guys, bishop c5 and knight c4, lined up on c line, it will become a burden later in the game. He act immediately on the king side with h4, pushed h3, a very good move, because after, for instance, rook a2, attack scrolls down very, very quickly. So, we should decide to take the pawn. Came okay, important move, rook c8. Another important uh, point for black now, the white's rook is tied to the defense of uh, bishop c5. And uh, after that, we should, we should have to meet uh, knight h4 with something. I believe rook takes h2 looked like the, more, the most normal move, but after knight d5, also, let's not forget that the queen is attached to the defense of uh, f3 pawn. Possibly such a position is no picnic. One good line is always the one which ends up with checkmate. Now, Vichy has taken h2 pawn by the king. And this is some position. I mean, many people expected most likely um, to have something like uh, we mentioned in the other line or even before queen h5 uh, to come up with Rook g3 first, and then queen h5. These are all really good lines, but I really like Hikaru's play now. He came up with something uh, really very definitive. He didn't 
to se around any of these moves, he came up with knight d7. And as you may notice, there is an incredible overload in black's pieces, sorry, in white's pieces. Rook is tied to the defense of f3 pawn. The other rook as well. Queen is tied to the defense of h3 pawn. C line is always an issue, can really break everything. And here came the greatest move, most likely of this tournament, a5. The pawn, which can be taken by many different pieces. For instance, if bishop takes a5, sacrifices are really rolling. Over the board to the other side. And now a nice checkmate on h3 will happen. So another line is that even simpler, that black doesn't have to sacrifice anything but to rook on c1. So under the circumstances, things are really grim for white. At the pool, his bishop back. At least now the bishop has some defensive role. Came the exchange sacrifice. And now the bishop is going to the square c5 from where it will directly attack to one of the holders of critical square f3. Okay, so here, of course, rook takes c5 wouldn't change much. We should decide to protect the pawn. And Hikaru, he could even take on f2, but he first swept this pawn on b6 to make the issue even more clearer. What I mean, like, okay, bishop takes f2, bishop takes f2, knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. You can't even make any threat against a vulnerable looking b7 pawn because knight comes to c5, tactical, and then takes on e4, it's game over. So comes this position where Ikaru takes first on b6, showing some real cold-blooded uh, reaction to the situation over the board. And then after some interesting moves, bishop d4, bishop d1. There is something to be said about this bishop d1. I mean, everybody expects maybe this one, but uh, in such situation, you see that the tactics are abundant. I mean, this is uh, really a sad case for white now. Now what to do? F3 and respectively H3 are, are going underway. And if you try to have some checks, black skin has a safe haven on G5. And here, something similar happened. As one can see, nothing has changed. White is completely tied. I don't know how he can move, you know, like this is a this is really a nightmare for Vicious. So he went back rook b1, rook g6. Now he has taken, he could have taken one move before, it wouldn't change much. And after a couple of checks, he had to resign. So congratulations to Hikaru. I mean, I had the opportunity to play with him in many American Opens. He was always a pleasant kid to me. And uh, this is a great day for him and uh, for American chess. But the co tournament continues as usual. Have a good night. Bye. Hi there, ICC fans. My name is Jam Soatatalik, and you have been listening to the game of the day from the London Chess Classic. And now comes the new in chess trivia question, where one lucky ICC member each day during the tournament can win a one-year subscription to the award-winning new in chess magazine. 
All you have to do is listen carefully to the following question and send your answer by email to us at trivia at chessclub.com. Please remember to also include your postal address. Entries will be open until one hour into the next day's play, and the first randomly drawn correct answer will be announced in channel 165 midway through each round of our live chess.fm broadcast. Send your answers to us at trivia at chessclub.com. And remember to send us your full name and postal address so we will know where to send the magazine should you win. Good luck, everyone. The winner of yesterday's New Winches trivia is Sixism from Turkey. The Irish-born former British champion, I am Colonel Hugh O'Donnell Alexander, who had famous victories over Batwinik and Bronstein to his name, but had a big disadvantage as he was never allowed to play in, a, in tournaments in the Soviet bloc during the 1950s and 1960s, while other lower-rated British players were allowed to play there. Why was Alexander not allowed to play in Soviet bloc countries? 